So I have a question about intergenerational interactions. What do those look like in this conversation of holy troublemaking we've been having? It occurs to me that we've recently seen an erosion of intergenerational spaces in our culture, and the church is one of those last holdouts. So how can we adults model this kind of spirituality well in a way that serves both our, our older populations and our younger? It's It really comes down to relationship and how important that is. So I, I can give you an example in my, my own congregation. We have some adults who've been passionately working um, towards peace in the Middle East since the 1970s. They have tremendous stories to tell and they want to get the kids involved and connected, but they've got to get to know the kids first. The kids have got to get to know them and to hear their stories before they can start um, caring about the, this issue on their own. And this is actually a fabulous time to be having having that conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think um, as much as our kids benefit from knowing that the history and the, the stories that, that our elders have to tell, our adults have so much that they can learn from and, and uh, have find their own spirituality deepening when they connect to our kids and get to know their stories and their passions. So it really is, um, it's a two-way street. Um, it involves deep listening. Um, it involves just much more than just knowing each other's names. Mm -hmm. um, but that's important too. You've got to start somewhere. Um, you know, know, knowing what people care about, knowing what gets them excited, um, knowing what their deep concerns are, their questions are, um, listening is, is just absolutely key. Um, this relationship building takes time and intergenerationality is not a program. It's, it's a culture and it, it's, it's deep work. It does not happen overnight. It does not, um, does not happen over a cup of coffee um, yeah. or, you know, at, at coffee hour in the, in the church. Um, but it starts there. Wendy, can and, I ask? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. In your congregation, have you seen this or in, in elsewhere too? Have you seen this done well? And for um, church leaders who want to make this a priority, what recommendations might you have? It really is a holistic approach and yeah. there needs to be buy-in from the leadership. Um, we, we need to be able to see kids in, in most spaces, if not all spaces. Um, we should be looking at a 70, 30 um, division. 70% of what we do in church should be intergenerational. 30% mm. of what we do should be um, in age cohorts. Worship should certainly be a place where everyone is engaged and involved, and that's maybe the hardest place to start. Um, so the, the good thing is most of us are already in um, situations where there are there's a calendar of, of uh, events, if not you know a calendar of the church year, where there are markers along the way where the congregation gathers and it's all ages. So that that's pretty, it's pretty easy to see where you can build on that. Mm. But it also means that you're going to have to give up a little adult control. <laughs> you're going to have to invite kids and teenagers into the planning process. You're going to eventually need to invite them to lead. Um, and that's much more uncomfortable for, for adults to think that, you know, it's it's one thing to have have a child um, who's who's uh, reading from the lectern. It's it's another thing to involve them in the planning and and leading of the liturgy itself. Right. Some contexts that'll work better than others. So I, I rarely suggest people start with worship. I, I think starting mm -hmm. um, with service, starting with uh, something like holy troublemakers and unconventional saints, which just lends itself so well to to intergenerational um, learning and story sharing. Um, starting with um, community, that's yeah. the, it's easier to imagine. And once you've got those relationships, 
then you can build and uh, see how that plays out in 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 corporate worship and in other ways. Um, I, you know, I I feel really lucky. I've one of the very first churches I served was a church that even before I got there, and this was twenty years ago, had had a decade's worth of of teenagers serving on the vestry with voice and vote, which mm. vestry is the leadership uh, body of of an Episcopal church. Um, and so, you know, it's not it's not new. It's 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 a harder thing, I think, for big churches to imagine than it is for small churches. Yeah. But yeah. uh, I, I go to a really small church and we just went through a two year thriving congregations program. And the two things that emerged, one of them was the intergenerational relationships that they're prioritizing. And it's already been a congregation where kids are welcome everywhere and kids partake in communion. They help serve communion. And, you know, there's just, yeah, it's a very tolerant congregation in terms of shenanigans that might be going on or something, something like that. But I feel super grateful for that um, emphasis. And one of the best relationship things that happened, well, Wendy points this out, actually, that when you're talking about books or curriculum, it's always intergenerational because the kids aren't buying these things <laughs> or locating or them, you know, them like, themselves. Yeah. or teaching them. Yeah. So like you are always talking inter intergenerational relationships. Um, but one thing that happened during COVID is one of the um, beloved members of our congregation who is a, um, well, he's a professor of religion, but he also is a huge Tolkien fan and he wanted to help the parents out. And he's, so we started doing an on the porch outdoor space hmm. reading together of the fellowship of the rings. And it took us like 18 months to read through those wow. three books together. And he led it. It was so nice not to be a parent leading it because, you know, kids just behave differently for another adult than Absolutely. they do. Even though I was involved in the group. So I still was like the shared story container. So coming back to like one of the best ways to engage with each other is in a story container, be that movies, be that books. Um, they just did something at our church where um, there's a strong relationship with some Cuban churches and some people who live there most of the time. And they were back for a brief visit, like a visa thing. And so somebody from church volunteered to pick up my kids and the other kids. And uh, they had a six hour, like making Cuban food together and like hearing stories and song. And it was yeah. fun building this intergenerational relationship. And they did it on purpose to, to do this intergenerational thing. So like story, food, you can't go wrong with either of those things to like, just start to build that container. Yeah. 